the narrator refers to the tigers in first person. <laughs> like five minutes in, it turns out the narrator is supposed to be a tiger. The narrator's supposed to be a tiger. After narrating it like a normal documentary, and then out of nowhere. This Ferris Bueller tiger suddenly <laughs> shows up and starts talking about how, oh yeah, those are my kids, that's my ex-girlfriend. The tiger just walks up to you with his wallet photos, and these are my kids, and this is my <laughs> wife, and this is us at Disney World. And now I'm gonna eat you because I'm a tiger. <laughs> The ride itself was not Joan Crawford's brainchild, but the idea to do a ride for the World's Fair with Disney along these lines, roughly, was very much Joan Crawford's passion project. She really wanted to make it happen. But one thing that this episode does not touch on at all is the mommy dearest of it all. The no wire hangers ever of it all. One of show business's most notorious child abusers shepherded into existence a ride about the children of the world all getting along and living in peace. Well, yeah, because they weren't her children. (laughs) She liked children as a concept. Yeah, she just didn't like raising real ones. Dealing with them on a daily basis was not a thing she was equipped to sign up for. Psycho killer. Talk about the tiny screeching French people. Oh, dear. If you have issues with othering your little people, might I introduce littler people? Yeah, brownies is what they were called. Terrible joke, and I apologize. I recognize objectively that they are extremely obnoxious. They are the Jar Jars of this movie. I do not deny that. I still found them funny. I'm they, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they didn't not contribute to the movie. Yeah. Right. I am Maybe built- Jar Jar should have been three inches tall in and, French. That and it could have also everything. been that because they're so small, what they lack in size, they have to make up for in being very loud and very French. Honey, I shrunk the John Cleese French taunter <laughs> in Holy Grail. I am going to be staring at the ceiling in the middle of the night tonight going, I stole a baby. <laughs> 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 I stole a baby. Short people got There's a lot of yelling about shoals. Yes. Oh, so many shoals. Oh, my shoals. God. The finest hours drinking game. Take a shot every time they say the word shoals, and before long, you will be drowning. You get a shoal. You get a shoal. We're all riding the shoal train. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, and it was kind of shoalless up to that point. Oh. When they figure out, hey, we're taking on water, our only chance of survival is to run aground against some nearby shoals, and they keep mentioning the shoals over and over again, and you will all be fucking heartbroken to learn in the real life story no shoals no shoals that didn't happen that was really? a complete invention for this movie oh they did God. not run the ship aground on shoal one <laughs> they wouldn't shut up about shoals for a half hour and that wasn't even a real part <laughs> it wasn't of the story. even a real part of the story because obviously this movie the one thing it needed was filler there's semen all around the bed semen on the floor semen in the bathroom and behind the closet door there's semen in the fireplace Mary Rogers gets screenplay by credit. Her biggest claim to fame is that she's the daughter of Broadway musical composer Richard Rogers, who yep. did the music for oh, Sound of Rogers Music. and Hammerstein? Of Rogers and Hammerstein, yep. Yep. Yes. She's a Nepo baby. Exactly, which Ooh, is another baby. knock against this movie for me. This is a movie that's giving work to the Nepo baby and to the future convicted rapist. Which I think we can all agree are exactly as bad as each other. They're both <laughs> practically the same no, thing. No, you're right. They are absolutely not. Not On record, in the David same... Spencer, Nepo babies and rapists. They're both irredeemable bad. monsters. No, How not dare in the same... she be born and be a woman? Okay, okay. I apologize for <laughs> equating those No backseas, no backseas, David. If someone says we'll bring you roses and rainbows, you better take a look. This film is so dedicated to accuracy that it depicts a New York where Grand Central Station is right across the street from the UN. (laughs) Now, Jen, you live in Staten Island. I imagine you've been to Manhattan quite a bit. Is that geographically accurate? 
No, it is not. <laughs> and this is coming from someone who did work at the UN for a short time, oh, wow. a very short time. <laughs> what? So, no. Amazing. I mean, that to me almost seems like a parody of how in movies about big cities, the big landmarks are always right next to each other. Yes. I had to be so mature by the end of the movie when it shows them flying through New York. <laughs> that's not Vegas, that's the World Trade Center! <laughs> oh, no! Take it away. Take it away. Back to the birds and the bees. How much better would 2001 A Space Odyssey have been if it had been scored with this version of the Blue Danube? A million times better, at least. Absolutely. Kubrick was a hack. <laughs> he was. He does not deserve credit for faking the moon landing at all. I totally could have made The Shining. I could have easily done that. I could have easily directed The How Shining. How hard could it have been? You just sit there and demand a zillion takes. I could have easily drove Shelley Duvall into madness. What's stopping you from doing it right now? Go, do it. All right. Follow your dreams. Yeah, you know what? I'll be right Right back. I have to go harass Shelly Duvall. See ya. Take the drive Shelly Duvall mad challenge. <laughs> I'm back. She stabbed me. Oh, no. Oh, good for her. Wah, wah. Then you be green. Black, black, black. What's more, it ain't clean. Trash, trash. It's green as a bean. Kelsey Grammer does the narration, so of course I kept waiting for him to get hit with a rake. <laughs> <laughs> he would say stuff like, iWorks would design the circular black ears and the effervescent spirit that would transcend all generations, nationalities, and time. Oh, Mickey transcends time? So people in ancient Rome and the Ming <laughs> Dynasty were enjoying through the mirror? What the hell are you talking about? You don't about? know about those ancient Sumerian hidden Mickeys? <laughs> Where do you think those came from? Wake up, sheep! We would have found the Mickey Mouse cave paintings if more of us were willing to go outside. There's transcriptions everywhere that says, what? No Mickey Mouse? What kind of a party is this? Oh my god. What? No Mickey Mouse. What kind of a party is this? When lemmings reach a certain population density, certain groups of them will migrate. This has given rise to an old wives' tale that lemmings commit mass suicide. They were trying to dispel the myth that it's a mass suicide event while perpetuating the myth that they really do jump off cliffs. Yeah, as part of the migration. Yeah, it's some like so Jonestown up. shit going on here for sure. They're not trying to kill themselves. We're trying to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, there is also an old myth that lemmings spontaneously explode. I'm of glad course there is. I do. That in this I film. Have... That's the thing about myths. You can just make shit up. Is that from the PC game? Is that one of the things <laughs> you can do? We are lemmings. We are crazies. That big animatronic squid, which had shockingly impressive fluidity oh my of the God. tentacle. Oh, yes. The movements were so lifelike. It's really freaky when you see the one coming through the door specifically. While we were watching, we made snarky riffs about, oh God, it's tentacle porn. Legally, you have to. Just picturing the crew aboard the submarine saying, oh my God, this is tentacle porn and we're literally a sub. Yeah. <laughs> Good for them. Nemo can send an electric shock through the exterior of the submarine. Yeah. And when they tried that on the squid, my first reaction was, no, the squid's into it. <laughs> Very kinky movie. Got a whale of a tail to tell you last. A whale of a tail or two. About the flapping fish and the girls I'm loving. The Mandalorian dropped the day Disney Plus launched. That was the big, huge launch day product that Disney was really pushing aggressively because James Gunn was fired, so they couldn't release the Guardians holiday special for three years. So yeah. did you know that the Guardians holiday special was originally going to be a Disney Plus launch day title in 2019, wow. but then James Gunn got fired. So they couldn't do the holiday special then. They had to wait until he came back to Marvel and was finished with the Suicide Squad. So that's why we only, this past holiday season, got the Guardian special that was supposed to drop three years earlier. We don't have Baby Groot. We need another baby. Somebody yeah, exactly. Baby. <laughs> exactly. I do love the image of Bob Chapek running down the halls of Disney Corporate. Somebody make another baby! Where do babies come from? His more attractive employees are looking at each other going, well, if he insists, I mean, come on. Anyone can see Also a 
that's another special where salmon fuck. So as Randy said, salmon just fucking die. They live the ideal life. <laughs> yeah, I did not expect to see a salmon's O face at the start of this, but <laughs> there was a shot where we see eggs coming out of the salmon where its mouth is just agape in some sort of an expression. Yeah. It very much looked like that salmon had been holding in a shit for a really long time. <laughs> and was just like, oh, thank God, a bathroom. Well, giving birth is the ultimate shit. <laughs> really. It's the only shit that gets you back. It's like, I'm going to hate you for the rest of your life because of this shit. What we're saying is that you should flush newborn babies down the toilet. There we go. Tiny salmon chasing that impossible dream. The minor bird says... Can we talk about just the great turns of phrase that would come out of this? Like, Please uh, do, yeah. So my favorite was when, I forget what was going well for them, but something was going well for them in the race. Georgie was excited about it and made a comment on it. And then very suddenly Davey said, don't go skin in the bar before we shoot him. <laughs> And that just brought such a great mental image of yes. like, well, I better start skinning this bear. It's like, <laughs> what are you doing? Wait, we haven't <laughs> shot him yet. <laughs> Get your order of operations that ready is, for fuck's sake. It's good advice. You know, I'm surprised they cast Michael Rooker as Mary Poppins instead of Emily Blunt, but damned if it didn't work. I'm Mary Poppins, <laughs> y'all. The movie with that line got its own Disneyland ride before Mary Poppins did, which yep. just kind of <laughs> seems wrong. <laughs> when they made Mary Poppins Returns and they had that cameo at the end from Angela Lansbury, which was clearly supposed to be Julie Andrews, but yeah. then Julie Andrews turned them down. They should have just gotten Michael Rooker. Yes! yes. <laughs> There's nowhere to go, but what up, boy? Getting down and dirty with a Procyon loader. Got no people skills, but he's good with motors. That weird thing by his side. Everyone still thinks it's Cletus in the chicken suit. And so once he becomes the celebrity, suddenly... All the girls are like, oh, Cletus, oh, you're so cool. You're All the so girls cool when... who are already in relationships with other people. Oh, my God. And are they... talking about how hot the chicken is. Yeah, Not just even the... just the guy in the chicken suit. They are all in love with the chicken. Because they call yeah. him the chicken. Disney is the losing their chicken. Robin Hood audience, so they need to come up with a new furry for everybody to pine over. Oh, oh. God, fuck me in the chicken suit. Oh, God. <laughs> Put your chicken in the... head on and but kiss me. I know actual furries could build a better suit. Oh, yeah. And probably right a better script probably let's talk about the egghead towers that he unveils so who wants to say what they look like because i don't <laughs> yeah y'all can see it right it's not just me seeing this is it it is a little 80s madonna right i know they're shaped like eggs but there's two of them so all I can see is boobs. They look like fucking boobs. I'm sorry. Like those big generator <laughs> boobs you see when you're driving down to San Diego. Yes. <laughs> These two identical towers, which we must say are then attacked by a flying object. These twin towers, one oh, might say. Right. These twin boobs. These twin eggs. Oh, okay. It yeah. wasn't not there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> But I put this on, my boyfriend came in and was like, oh, I used to love this movie as a kid. I watched it over and over again. And then immediately told me that the daughter was in some kind of sex trafficking cult. Yes! <laughs> what? Oh, God. Oh, my God. We have to talk about this. Is this the same one as Kristen Crook in What's-Her-Face from Smallville? I don't know. <laughs> Garrett, this girl is What's-Her-Face from Smallville. Oh, is that Chloe? Oh, my gosh. Yes. Allison Mack, who later played Chloe on Smallville and was sent to prison for being involved in a sex trafficking cult. Oh my God. I'm not God. fucking kidding. That is who that is. I guess she trafficked her victims by shrinking them. I mean, it's effective. You can Just traffic it. people in your pocket, for God's sake. I ain't going nowhere, man. I ain't going nowhere. It's dangerous out there, man. Might have been a big bomb scare. Hard to get off of this easy chair. That bomb disposal was pretty awful, you take a bomb underground, and you can potentially be destroying all kinds of infrastructure. Yeah, you literally could have destroyed the entire city by setting off that bomb underground. And I wrote down why underground. So they could do a digging scene. Yeah. I mean, you they could, could throw dogs it up bury in the stuff. Space. It's called under. 
dog. Ah. You could throw it up into space. You could take it to the ocean. Well, you underdog have a lot of choices. Underdog does fly up into space Not after really intentionally. Well, halfway intentionally. Jack was showing underdog superhero comics earlier, so when he went into space, I was just thinking, "You are who you choose to be." Crypto the super dog. <laughs> So Santana, you mentioned that you don't really like stop motion claymation yeah, style. Yeah, it's eerie. Did you feel the <laughs> same way watching this? Yeah. Like look at right now. Look at those dead eyes from the little <laughs> mini chewy guy there. Like a doll's eye. Yeah, yeah I, I, I will like, say. Like a shark's eyes. I don't feel that way about stop motion claymation. I like it just fine, but I will say I was getting a little creeped out by the claymation interpretation of Wookiees. <laughs> <laughs> My therapist saying claymation Wookiees aren't real. They can't can't hurt you. <laughs> claymation Wookie will not bite you and throw you in the basement. He took a hundred pounds of clay and then he said, Hey, listen, I'm gonna fix this a world. I've actually prepared a speech here that I'd like to read for you all, if I may. Please do. Go on. To all my family, friends, loved ones, to all the experiences I've had and will have from now until the cold hand of death comes to collect my soul, to all these and more, I say, you are all dog shit now. <laughs> my heart has been taken by a man that I can only describe as if Willem Dafoe played the greasy strangler. <laughs> <laughs> I will now be living in the woods of Griffith Park taking on the position once held by Mountain Lion P-22. I expect my days to be difficult but fruitful. If you see me in the ruins of the old L.A. Zoo, please do not approach me, for I have seen a man turn into the rose from Beauty and the Beast, and I am no longer responsible for my actions. He's a lemon, she's a lime. Beauty and King Dog. This whole episode was the best use of rabbit oh, I've yeah. ever seen. Such an underappreciated character. And also unloved. I mean, yes. you put him on a lineup, no one's going to go, my favorite is rabbit. I want a shirt with rabbit. If a kid <laughs> says their favorite Winnie the Pooh character is rabbit, send that kid to a therapist. The older I've gotten, the more <laughs> I relate to rabbit. <laughs> yeah. He is a linchpin character because he is the straight man. He's the responsible yeah, one. True. He's the one who knows that everyone else is an idiot. Honestly, there are times where I look at Rabbit and I do ask the age-old question, would estrogen have saved her? And I'm not <laughs> sure yet, but it's very possible. That woman with the black hair and glasses. Edna Mode's grandma. Yeah. She lady. looked a the lot moment. like the corpse mom from The Nightmare Before Christmas that has the kid on the leash. Mm. She was giving me those vibes. Maybe it was just the moo she was wearing. To me, she looked like a three-way cross between Edna Mode, Larry Bud Melman, <laughs> and the babysitter in the Cat in the Hat movie. Oh my God, she oh, does! Yeah. The one who kept falling I was asleep. thinking more Mimi from the Drew Carey show. The beehive hairdo woman keeps on repeating, he tried to eat my Raymond. I mean, what do you expect? Everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> it's a wiener dog. You put him on a bun with some ketchup and mustard. With the right mustard. barbecue sauce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dead puppies. Dead, 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 dead puppies. I mean, on the plus side, I now know the plot of the zombies movies without having to do you, though? sit through. The, I mean, I kind of do, I think, kind of. maybe, sort of. They re-explained them like four or five times throughout the course of these shorts. Yeah, the second recap was better. Do you ever have a conversation with like a straight up six-year-old about their favorite cartoon? Because yeah. that's what it was like. It's a zombie and he plays football. And then there's a girl <laughs> and she's a cheerleader and she has hair and it's a different color. And then there's werewolves and they're sick. And there's a rock and the aliens are cheerleaders and they want a map and the girl with a hair is an alien now. But now there's another movie. Hey, turns out Seabrook has werewolves. They're looking for the moonstone or else they will die. So they gotta throw the apples at this spinning wheel full of mirrors and they've gotta break the mirrors with the apples. And every time they break a mirror, the wheel speeds up and they only have so many apples. So that's the challenge there. It's really mean to make these kids each get 28 years of bad luck for that yeah. one game. <laughs> when the wheel starts spinning faster after they break the first mirror, 
They are so confused by that. They just cannot fathom what's happening. Well, what happened was the director said, okay, now we're going to spin the wheel faster. We want you to be confused. Oh my God. We're so confused. The wheel spinning faster. Either that or these are the dumbest people alive. I have never played Ocarina in time in my life. This is my quest to follow that star. little detail that the sound hole in Kristoff's loot is apparently on both sides of it because you can see right through it. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Same with Olaf's buttons, it looks like. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he's been impaled. Yeah. Twice, apparently. <laughs> he was bitten by a sideways vampire. <laughs> sideways vampire. The most dangerous kind of vampire. And a fine name might be Giant Song, I'm sure. (laughs) Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go. My theory is when they're bringing Jack in on the horse and this is Halloween, he's coming in from having gone around the world and putting this big cloak of Halloween over the world. As the headless horseman? Oh, that is a cool theory. There actually is a fan theory that Jack is the headless horseman. Damn. Headcanon accepted. That's Tim Burton connected universe right there. (laughs) Exactly. So Jack Skellington was Christopher Walken? The entire time. (laughs) Now, I want you to make it. It's very easy. The coat is red. The trim is white. I I can take the only prescription. Two recycles. Two little rats. The theory has a bucket of cream. It's much more fun, I must confess. With lives on the line. Not mine, of course, but yours, oh boy. Now let it be just fine. Release me fast, or you will have to answer for this haters act. Oh, brother, you're something. You put me in a spin. You aren't comprehending the position that you're in. It's hopeless. You're finished. You haven't got a prayer. Cause I'm Mr. Boogie Boogie. And you 